G'day, Michael from Ironbark Game Studio, and welcome to the ninth part of this tutorial series where we'll be covering the process of exporting textures out of Substance Painter and then setting up a material in Blender where we can view our textures. Alrighty, jumping into Substance Painter where we have our nicely textured finished off character here, and I'm going to come up to File and then go to Export Textures. And the first thing I'm going to do is find a location to save my textures. So in the output directory, I'm going to click on this, find a location to save your textures and go select folder. And then the second thing I'm going to look at is the output template. So by default, this has been set to PBR Metallic Office, and this is the one we're going to be using. But if I click down here, we have a whole range of other software which you can set the default output template to. So for example, there's one for the Unity HD Render Pipeline. Uh, there's also one for the Unreal Engine um, as well. But we're just going to stick with PBR Metallic Roughness here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Material underscore Fleur, so it's the material of my character. And here we have some export parameters. The size, I'm going to leave this as 4K, so 4096 by 4096. But if you wanted to change this, make this smaller or even larger, you can click on this little Edit button here. And then you can click on the drop down and choose what resolution you want to save it out as. Uh, but again, I'm just going to leave it at 4096, 4K. And then below this, we have our output maps. So we're exporting the color, roughness, metallic, normal. And below that, we have a height and emissive. I don't actually need the height or emissive. We're not going to be using those. So I'm just going to tick them off so I don't export them. From here, I could just click on export to export my textures. But I will make note of the Output Templates tab here. And these are all the templates which we could have selected in the, the last screen. And here you can actually edit them or take a look to see what they're actually creating. So the one we're using is the PPR Metallic Roughness. Uh, and you can see all of the output maps in here. If you wanted to make adjustments to this, you can just click on the Copy uh, button up here. That's going to create a copy of that template. And then you can make any adjustments that you want. And you can also have a look at some of the other presets as well, such as the Unity HD Render Pipeline. Um, that exports fuel maps, uh, which is a little bit more efficient for the Unity Engine. Same thing with the uh, Unreal Engine one as well. But anyway, going back to settings, I'm going to click on Export. So that's going to export those textures, and now we're done with Substance Painter. Now, jumping into Blender where we want to add our textures to our material. So I'm going to come across the top here and I'm going to go to the Shading tab. I'm just going to zoom in on my character. And just a couple of things to take note of in this Shading tab. Up the top right here, we can see that the Viewport Shading has been set to Material Preview. And this Material Preview will provide a more accurate representation of our material, including showing the textures on the model. This is also being lit by a HDR, or a High Dynamic Range Image. And this image is projected spherically and lights the scene so that we can view our materials in a more realistic environment and not just flat lighting. So Substance Painter also lights the scene with a HDR. You will really notice this if you have a really shiny material, this HDR image will actually be reflected in that material. There's a few settings in here such as changing the rotational strength of the HDRI, of the HDR, but I'm just going to leave it as is. Now down the bottom here is our shader editor. And if you select the different objects in the scene with different materials, the different materials are going to pop up down here. Currently, we just have the one material for the matte underscore flow, which has been applied to all of the different pieces of our character. You should see two nodes. If you don't see two nodes here, just make sure that you've got the use nodes button ticked on. And the first node is the principled BSDF. The principled BSDF node is an uber shader. And this is a shader which can take a series of inputs, in our case, our exported textures, and it's going to combine them together for the material output, which is this node on the right. The type of rendering which we're going to use is PBR, or physically based rendering. So PBR attempts to simulate light in a realistic way to achieve photorealism. When creating textures for a PBR workflow, you will typically need an albedo, or a base color, which contains the color data without any shadows or highlights. You need a roughness texture, which describes areas of the surface which are shiny or matte, so how reflective a surface is. We need a metalness texture, which describe areas that are metal or non-metal. And finally, we need a normal texture, which is used to fake indentations and bumps on a surface by using the lighting of the scene. 
bit of an oversimplification of PBR, but that's the, the basis of what you need to know for this series. So to get our textures connected to our BSDF shader, we're going to go Shift A, we're going to go Texture and Image Texture. Add that in there. I'm then going to connect up the color node here to the base color. Currently we don't have a texture applied yet, so I'm going to go Open. And I'm going to find where I've saved my textures here, and I'm going to choose the base color for this one. You should see the character now with color applied in the viewport. Um, it's looking very flat though and washed out because there's none of the metal roughness or normal variation. So let's create a new image inside of our shader editor. So Shift A, Texture, Image Texture. And this one's going to be plugged into the metallic there. We're going to go open, find our metallic. And for our metallic texture, we need to untick or change the color space from sRGB to non-color data. Let's just organize this bit, move these up. Uh, in fact, we can also just click on the little uh, drop down there. Move these here. I'm going to go Shift A, add another texture, image texture. And this one's going to be plugged into the roughness. Open that up. In my textures, find my roughness. And once again, we want to use color space, non color data. Let's close that one down. I'm going to go Shift A, texture, image texture. And this is going to be for our normal map, so I'm not going to plug it in straight away, but I'm just going to open it up. And once again, non color data. And in between the color and the normal spot, we need another node. So I'm going to go Shift A, and I'm just going to go search for a normal map. And we can connect the color of our texture to the color of the normal map, and then the normal to the normal node. And with that done, the character in the viewport should be looking pretty close to how it looks inside of Substance Painter. So if we go back to our default layout, and change the shading from solid to material preview. We can see our character with the textures applied and it's looking pretty nice. Strictly speaking, this step is not required unless you want to create some rendered images inside of Blender, which we will be doing in part 16. However, it is nice to see how the textures are applied to the model, particularly when we get into rigging and animation where we can see how the textures deform as part of the mesh. Rigging will be the next part of this series. This is the process of adding bones to form a skeletal structure inside the character. The mesh will then be bound to the skeleton in a process called rigging, which is part 11. And then the skeleton can be moved in keyframe to animate the character, which will be done in parts 12 and 13. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you found it useful. You can check out our Patreon link in the description with a variety of rewards such as starting files, tutorial notes, and early access to the rest of the series. And I'll see you in the next one.